In this video, we're gonna talk about how to grow a construction business. And what are some of the most common roadblocks to growing and scaling your business? What are the eight things to watch out for? And what can you do to not get stuck? We're gonna cover that right now. So I wanna connect with you here as I begin. So we get to work with so many construction companies. We actually, in some instances, really run their construction company, at least for the operations standpoint and the business standpoint, for them. And I have a lot of experience for this, uh, not only being a director, uh, but participating in family construction companies and in consulting. And I can tell you, most of the wonderful, wonderful human beings that I talk to reach a point where they get stuck. And at that point, there's always a key a component missing from their business. And the people that are running their businesses, they're great. They started their business. They were the entrepreneur. They stepped out and took the risks. They're the subject matter expert. They're the artist. Like they're the jam. Like they're amazing people, but they're stuck. And I love, love, love doing the research in some of the best business books that I've been able to find and the best business trainings that I've been able to attend, the actual answers to what component is missing. And there's a common theme and we're gonna share that with you now. So I do want you to know that if you are a business owner and you feel stuck, this video is a jam. If you are in business and you're tired of fighting fires, this video is for you. If you're in construction and you just feel like there's gotta be a better way and you wanna take care of people, please listen up. I'm gonna give you some great resources and references. So let's do this. Number one, this is the most important and this single truth weaves itself through every business that I've ever seen. And there's two good books on it, which I'll also link to in the description below. But there's a book called Traction and there's a book called Rocket Fuel. I highly recommend both of those books. Now, when you first read those books, you might be like, I'm not ready for this. Great, read it, come back to it in a couple years, you're fine. I have read uh, books by Patrick Lencioni, uh, Jim Collins, um, obviously these books are by Gino Wickman, right? Uh, there's books by Peter Drucker, there's a number of different references and experts out there when it comes to business. What I feel like Gino Wickman and his partner did is really distill this down into a system. But what I really like is the book called Rocket Fuel and he talks about two positions, the visionary and the integrator. The visionary is the position that's really always looking out ahead. It's the entrepreneur, it's the one that, and I don't mean to be irreverent with this, but has ADD or ADHD like really just all over the place. I am very sensitive to that, by the way. I'm just saying that's how they explain it in the book and that's how I'm repeating it here. The person that really just has the big, crazy, unreasonable ideas, the visionary is like, where can we go next step? The integrator is the position that really creates the machine that runs the system, that creates stability, that organizes the system, that leads the teams, that integrates the different departments. The integrator is the one that takes the vision and makes it happen. You have to have both of these positions in your company. You know, honestly, like I would say 80% of the problems that I see are they, the company doesn't have a visionary and an integrator and they just need to go get one. And in the book, Rocket Fuel, they talk about how to go uh, recruit and hire one, how to pair together, how to really structure that in a remarkable way. I usually find that a business owner is a, a visionary, meaning the artist and the product uh, the subject matter expert or the person who created the business doesn't have somebody that can actually make the vision a reality or they're good at getting things done but they won't take the company forward and they don't have that what they call VI partnership. So if you read Rocket Fuel and you also take the test, you can identify are you a visionary or an integrator or both or not and do you need to take that next step of getting the right people uh, in the right seats on the bus and the wrong people off. I will tell you, a company will always cap at the ability and pairing of its leadership team. I'd say the other 20% is typically, you know, do the companies have the right leadership teams, right? If they have the right VI partnership, do they have marketing? Do they have operations? Do they have finance and accounting and legal all organized properly underneath the integrator, right? So that leadership team being able to work in a cohesive manner, Patrick Lencioni says, 
team one, and then all departments are team two. Having that leadership team work as team one is the other large percentage of where I see companies fail. And so you've got to get that VI partnership, you've got to get the right people on the bus, the right people in the right seats, and you've got to get that leadership team organized and functioning properly according to the five dysfunctions of a team. That book, I'll link that to you in the description below. If you have the right people on the bus and the right people in the right seats, there isn't any problems that you can't solve. So that's the bottom line. So uh, leaders of companies, um, vice presidents, whatever your position is, stop trying to solve the problem. And I do say the word try on purpose because you're not getting it done. And start getting the right people in the right seats. Your number one metric in a successful company is the percentage of the right people in key seats. Focus there first. So number two, in the right seats. So I've talked to you about this before, but I will say, how do you analyze whether people are in the right seats? Well, so that's a fantastic question. Some of it comes from experimentation. Some of it comes from personality profiles. Some of it comes from understanding their background and education, but it really comes from, uh, does that person have that position as a part of their red zone? Do they like it? Are they good at it? And can they make money? at it. I love the book Beyond Entrepreneurship 2.0 because Jim Collins basically says this, in their position, how have you felt about their performance in that position in the last six months? Has your confidence increased or decreased? Do their abilities really fit with that position? Does success in that role, if it was done right, mean a large financial gain for the company. And are you or are you not realizing that? In that seat, is there a high potential for risk if done improperly? And is that actually happening, right? So there are specific questions that you can ask yourself about whether or not a person fits in that role. I would also recommend using the cultural index and another personality profile called the six types of working genius. But at the end of the day, your visionary, your CEO with the rest of the team should be able to dig deep here and really analyze, is this person in the right seat? And if you listen to Gino Wickman in the book Rocket Fuel and his partner, what they say is fill out the organization chart that your company needs, forget about who's there, and then see if who is there is qualified for the positions. If the answer is no, you will never progress farther than the people being or not being in the right seats. Number three, meetings, interactions, and proximity. You can have the VI partnership, you can have the right people in the right seats, you can have a killer leadership team, but if they're not connected, it doesn't matter. So as soon as we have what we need, we need to have the right meetings, the right meeting frequency, we need to have the right engagements, we need to build that team as a part of the five behaviors of a team, and we must have proximity. So once you have the right people, right people, right seats, now those right people and right seats must have proximity in order to solve the problems that are ahead of them in the first place. So number three is always meetings, interactions, and proximity. And if you don't have it, get it. It's hugely important. And number four, once you have that, your leadership team must have absolute clarity on where they're going, align every effort in the organization towards that clarity, and make sure that you have flow efficiency through departments and no silos, and that you're solving problems as a group. Speaking of clarity, just real quick, I'm almost done with my list. One thing that I'd like to be clear about is how much I would love to partner with you and have you subscribe to this channel and have an ongoing relationship and get this content to you consistently. So there's some clarity for you. I'll keep going with my list. I got some more. Number five, Five. Once you have clarity as a leadership team, you scale that clarity, you communicate that clarity, you make sure everyone in the organization is heading in that direction and rowing that boat in that direction together in unison. Six, reinforce that clarity. We hire, we fire, we promote, we demote, we discipline. We have consequences for not following that clarity and not following our core values. Everything we do with human systems is reinforced or it, our guiding star becomes our vision and our clarity and our core values. Meaning that how people behave in the culture we create will be closely aligned with it and it must be protected and it must be reinforced and in some cases we must hold people accountable to it in order for us to scale and have that traction forward and then eventually that rocket fuel to propel your, our organizations forward. And then number seven, once you have that, so let me just say, and this is not a summary, but let me just say, once you have the right people, right seats, right proximity, 
right meetings with clarity and everyone's heading in the same direction, now everyone can solve problems. But guess what? We're not solving problems according to what each department wants to do or what each individual wants to do. We're solving problems according to the clarity of where we're headed as an organization. And so number eight, what I want to mention to you now is that these previous seven concepts become a lid, meaning if they're not dealt with and if you have not addressed them, they will cap the success of your organization every single time. And so you can have all of those in place. You can understand all of them. But if they're not all well developed and streamlined and optimized, the level of performance in any one of those categories will cap or as John C. Maxwell says, put a lid on according to the law of the lid, the success of your organization. And so I'm just going to ask you straight up, please read the book Traction. Please read the book Rocket Fuel. I can tell you, I've never seen a stuck construction company that didn't have one of these problems. And I would say if you have all of these in place, the lean concepts that I'm telling you about, the tax production system, the integrated production control system, lean thinking, operational excellence, once they're implemented, your company will perform like it's on rocket fuel. So in the description below, we're gonna leave you the links to those books. Please read them. Please reach out if you need any other clarity. But if you're stuck, I promise you the answer lies in one of these eight steps. I hope you've enjoyed this. On we go.